everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual workshop, Digital Transformation Disruption with a Purpose. My name is Brittany Poff, Marketing Coordinator with GSI, and I'm also very pleased to welcome Rob Morata. He is a Senior Director of Solution Consulting here at GSI. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm on the West Coast, so it's still morning my time. As Brittany said, I'm the solution, uh, Senior Director of Solution Consulting, really tasked with uh, developing um, solutions and architecting those solutions for our customers as they needed. Uh, GSI, we're a full service ERP firm. Our, our main mission is really around quality, integrity, and respect uh, to our customers and clients. We like to um, call all our clients our partners and, and develop that partner relationship with them. We have a, a great team of uh, creative, energetic, and experienced professionals. Um, and we're a very family-centric and uh, customer-client-centric firm. We really go to the, uh, the extent of doing anything for our, our customers, clients, and our partners. Um, as I said, we're a full-service ERP firm. We also uh, do S uh, SaaS uh, implementation, SaaS resells. We're also a cloud and ITSM and cybersecurity reseller and consulting uh, firm. We also have a very robust robust managed services organization around the J.D. Edwards product itself. Um, our team is our team is about 100 strong. We are um, we specialize in, in in different areas of industry. We have different certifications. Um, ISO certified, IDL certified, uh, uh, CPAs, um, Oracle certified consultants. So we have a very robust team that uh, keeps up with the latest and greatest of um, the technology that we're working with. Uh, we also believe in advanced augmented intelligence. Uh, that's what the A stands for and automation in our products and services. So in our managed services arena, we've developed some proprietary products that allow us to um, basically learn from what's going on with our customers and our clients and uh, make decisions based on that. We are a uh, national firm. We have offices nationwide. Our consultants are pretty much all um, work from home remote, uh, remote employees. So we can cover anybody within the, in the geographic United States, North America, Canada. We also have a, um, a partner network around the world. So we do do uh, client, we do do work all over the, the world um, with that partner network. And we do do 24 by seven, follow the sun support as well. Um, we also, one of the only firms in our industry within the Oracle J.D. Edwards uh, industry is we have a 100% guarantee on our work. So if it's not right, we're gonna make it, uh, we're gonna make it right or we're gonna give you your money back. So one of the, that's one of our um, key competitive advantages. We also do, uh, not only do we do Oracle J.D. Edwards NetSuite, um, Oracle database and any of the Oracle middleware. We also have a ServiceNow practice, uh, Salesforce practice. We work with uh, AWS, Azure, um, Oracle cloud infrastructure as well. And we are ITSM, uh, we also use BMC. And then lately we have embarked on a HubSpot um, consulting practice. So we pretty much will um, cover the needs of our customers and our clients. Uh, as we develop new opportunities, we explore them and uh, really want to be a full service shop for, for our clients. That's it about GSI. We want to introduce uh, the UHI uh, team today. Cindy Hanafi is the managing director at UHY and consulting. She's a transformation solutions group that helps organizations define their vision and execute on strategies uh, from optimizing processes, technology, to transforming uh, departments or companies. And with that, I'll turn it over to you and thanks for the uh, few minutes. Great, thank you very much. Um, my name is Cindy Hanafy. I'm a managing director for UHY. A little bit about UHY. Uh, UHY is a global professional uh, services net, uh, company. We have over 8,200 employees in 300 locations across the globe in over 100 countries. 
Here in the US, we have about 26 offices across the US and UHY Consulting um, is a, a firm that helps businesses transform their organizations. We do business strategy, organization and operations, finance and accounting, different business applications, um, technology innovation, cybersecurity and uh, staffing as well. So we are an affiliated um, affiliate of UHY LLP, which is a national certified public accounting firm. Happy to be here today. So to get the ball rolling, let's talk a little bit about what digital transformation is. Uh, and this is the framework that we're going to work with today. Everything centers around uh, technology, where we're going to talk about how important strategy and vision is to your technology efforts, process optimization, as well as change management. It's the intersection of the people, the process, and the technology. So to, when we talk about disruption, um, we talk about um, something that, you know, about breaking apart the status quo. Um, so we have our, our, our current state, our convention, and we have a vision of where that we need to be and where we need to grow. And it's going to take disruption to break that status quo so that you can reach your vision. So that's what we mean by disruption. So, but there are some negative connotations to disruption. When we talk about disruption, we just, everything is, you, you know, immediately what comes to your mind is that negative. But here's some facts. So 80% of organizations, these facts are per the Project Management Institute, but 80% of organizations have gone through some sort of a significant uh, transformation with technology that is involving technology. But unfortunately, only 25% of those 80% those of the organizations have actually achieved tangible benefits. And that's kind of scary. Um, organizations waste, according to PMI, about $132 million for every billion invested uh, in a digital transformation. And PMI is projecting for 2022 global spending of about $1.97 trillion. So think about the potential waste um, that globally organizations can collectively be wasting on failed implementations. So when it comes to technology implementations, what we find, and according to the PMI, a majority of companies undertaking uh, a digital transformation actually lack a, a clear direction of where they wanna go, or there's weak project sponsorship from the executive team, uh, and there's weak adherence to a detailed project plan. And those are some of the, the factors that we see that cause um, some negative disruption and cause technology to fail. But what we wanna do is we wanna turn this on its head and we want to create a more positive outlook with a digital transformation. We wanna disrupt with a purpose. Um, so UHY told its customers, just kind of get a pulse on where our customers are. And over the last 92 or 18 months, 92% of our customers have gone through some type of a digital transformation. It could be a full ERP system. Uh, it could be uh, ancillary third-party systems, uh, but they've done some sort of technology integration within the last 18 months. 85% of those who were pulled felt that they were very well prepared for the implementation, but only 46% indicated um, or 46% indicated that this digital transformation was disruptive, more disruptive than they anticipated. Uh, even though they felt they were well prepared, they still weren't um, as prepared or they, they felt like the di disruption was a lot more than what they had anticipated. So you see that, you know, we do have a critical uh, focus on making sure and understanding that disruption is common. It, you know, a new ERP system or new technology can rock your world, 
because it's going to break the way you normally do your processes and you're going to be using a new tool. And some people are receptive to that and some people aren't. So we wanna to move towards what we call intentional disruption, making a conscious decision to disrupt with a purpose, taking control of that change. And if you take control of that change and if you're expecting disruption, amazing things can happen to your organization, your people, your processes, and your technology. So what is digital transformation? We call digital transformation, it's the uh, an intersection between the people and the processes and the technology within your corporate culture. Uh, it's essential, it's intentional, and it's deliberate disruption. We know it's going to be per, uh, disruptive, but we're going to break the status quo of the way we've always done things. And we're going to create those processes and install those technologies that help align your organization to your company's strategic vision. And that's the framework of what we're gonna talk about today is to how to have a successful digital transformation understanding that it's disruptive, but harnessing that disruption for the good. So we're first gonna start with a discussion about is your strategy and vision ready? Your strategy and vision is very important for a couple of different reasons. First, understanding what your strategy and vision is will influence the technology choices that you make. If you're forward thinking and you wanna make sure that you're building out future capabilities, for instance, are you a, strictly a business to business or will you start some sort of an e-commerce? Maybe you're straight, you will be a business to, straight to the consumer. So we wanna make sure that we have those forward thinking technologies in mind and we tap into that vision and strategy of where we want to go to help drive our technology uh, choices. And that technology will help drive us into the future. What it also does is it influences your employees' behaviors. Your vision should be inspiring. It is the rally cry, the pom-poms of your organization. It is the why you're here why you're in business. And this provides your employees the big picture of where you want to go and what's important to the organization. And that will translate into strategy for them, meaningful goals, connecting to the big picture, and helping drive the organization to the future vision. Now, we've all heard the saying that it takes a tribe to raise a child. Well, it takes all your employees to implement and adapt and use and grow the organization with technology. And that's why your strategy and vision is very important. So let's look at for a minute Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So the theory here, Maslow was a psychologist um, back in the 50s and early 60s. Um, and for those of you who have studied human resources, we always talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And the theory is, is when employees' physiological and safety needs are met, then they have a sense of connection and purpose. And when you provide them with esteem in the form of recognition and status, then they will start to um, perform and live and at their highest abilities. So what we wanna do is to provide our employees with that vision, with this hierarchy of needs so that they can live and work at their highest potential. And involving them in that vision and creating that sense of connection with your employees is hugely important in the success of a digital transformation. So let's talk a little bit about why that is so important. And why it's so important is we start with the why. So according to Simon Sinek, who is a fabulous consultant and, and marketeer, um, 
says that most companies and most people know what they do and they know how they do it. But a lot of times companies don't know why they do it. And so what we need to do is create a connection of that why, which is your vision with your employees. And I'll give you an example of Amazon. Amazon's vision, Amazon sell has sold many things. They started in 1995 as an online book retailer. And today um, you've advanced to pretty much you can buy anything you need online. Um, uh, and it's been a marketplace uh, for a lot of different companies uh, and entrepreneurs. But Amazon's vision is, our vision is to be Earth's most customer-centric company, to build a place where people can come to find and discover anything they might want to buy online. So that gives a sense of connection. For me personally, the vision is Saturday morning, wake up, have my cup of coffee, sitting up in bed, have my Kindle out, and I'm doing every bit of my shopping that I need for the week or the next couple of weeks online. I created that place, that quiet place, where I could go buy anything that I need online. And they have, over the history of their company, built that vision with their employees focused on creating that customer-centric company where they can buy anything they want online from books, to jewelry, to shoes, to food, to building products, you can buy everything that you need online. So they are living their vision and their employees have gotten them there. I have another really good example of starting with the why, the vision. Um, and that's what you want your organization to be and why. And then the example is Ferrari. So everybody knows Ferraris are Italian cars. They, they're built with excellence. Um, and so the what is they do is they build cars. The how, they build excellent cars, high performance cars. So let's talk about the why. Why do they do what they do? And here is their vision. Their tagline is Italian excellence that makes the world dream. And they go on to say, we build cars, symbols of Italian excellence, the world over, and we do so to win on both the road and the track. Unique creations that fuel the prancing horse legend and generate a world of dreams and, and emotions. And so that is why they're in business because they wanna build uh, and create a world of dreams and emotions, especially for their customers. So there is a connection with why they've been so great is because of the vision that they want to achieve. And that vision, when connected to the employees, connects to your strategy. So the how you're going to achieve your vision is developed so that you can reach your division, your vision. And then goals and objectives are the what to help you achieve your strategy. So if we give our uh, folks a good sense of the why, They'll do any type of what you want them to do because their life has a purpose. They're, they're meaningfully there with their career. It has a purpose. It has a goal. They know the rally cry and they're going to support your vision um, and create goals and objectives to help build you toward that vision. So this is why it's really important to understand is your strategy and your vision ready? If it's not, it's time to dust it off, rethink it, understand why we're in business, what we're here to achieve, and how do we roll that out to the rest of the organization. The second area that I'd like to focus on today are, are your processes ready? So, um, and this is very important, preparation in, a, in any type of a technology implementation is critical. Too many times have we uh, worked with companies um, who don't understand what their current state processes look like. And when you add in a new technology, that technology is going to operate differently um, than what you have today. We've had some companies who've had the same technology in for 10 and 20 years, and they're looking to upgrade their technology. 
technology has advanced rapidly, far beyond what they're used to. Um, so the way they do their processes and the way they conduct their processes have to change too. So we have to disrupt that process. This is a great time when you're implementing new technology to optimize those processes. So what can you do with a business process optimization? Well, like we said, we can intentionally disrupt our status quo, go in with the intention of breaking everything, identifying waste, doing a comprehensive view of your business operations, set the stage for your business strategy, this is a time when you can focus diligently on your customers, both internal and external and what they need. Identifying the gaps between your current state and where you wanna be and eliminating process efficiencies. And this is the time to document and design your future state processes. And this will help pave the way to your digital transformation. So when I talk about designing what your future state looks like, this, since you're going to be implementing new technology and selecting new technology, this technology today is so much more configurable than it was years ago. So you have some opportunities to be able to create your internal workflows and configure your workflows uh, more efficiently to fit your business needs than it was years ago where customization was, was um you know, the taboo word. But we can design and document our future state processes and be prepared for when the technology implementation partners come in. And we can say, here's what we want our processes to look like. And they can configure our tool to work well with our, our new business processes. So being prepared is very critical. Um, to the, the digital transformation and doing pre-preparation before the implementation is critical. So disrupting your current processes, taking a comprehensive view, it, picking out pain points, understanding what the inefficiencies, eliminating and designing those new state future state processes is the way to help it to trans to. Uh, pave your way to your digital transformation. So when I talk about optimizing your processes, you may have heard the term lean. So we wanna lean out those processes. Um, so we first want to identify key focus areas. For example, uh, sales to customer quote, that could be a key focus area. A customer order, all the way to cash, procurement of goods and services to the payment of those goods and services, and the recording of transactions to the reporting of those transactions. Those could be potential key areas. And if they're designed well, you eliminate issues um, in downhill process. So we wanna focus on key areas such as those and then identify functional team leaders across those key focus areas to participate in the design of the process. The best subject matter experts of your business is your people. And they have a ton of institutional knowledge. And this is the place to tap into that uh, subject matter expertise and that in and that internal knowledge to create new processes and lean out your process. What's really important here is making sure you have executive sponsorship, a strong executive sponsorship who understands the critical nature of a technology implementation and is there to help you pave the way to implementation. Um, communicate. We're wanting to communicate our needs and our objectives of our new technology. So we're going to just do discovery around what those look like and we're gonna communicate our needs to the organization. And then we go to the Gemba and Gemba means where the work gets done. So 
sitting side by side with the people who do the work to understand their processes so that we can understand how to create a lean process, how to eliminate waste. So you might ask, how do we eliminate waste? Well, we assess waste based on the eight types of waste wheels. And think about a process, especially in the staffing industry. Um, you've identified a candidate or an, a consultant that you for a client project. So you set up the new consultant and we give them a bunch of paperwork, but what if we missed um, a key critical uh, setup form for the employee? It gets all the way down to the human resources department and the human resources department is missing key critical information to set up the employee and or pay the employee. We call that a defect because we have to go rework the same process. So we look at those gaps in the process or pain points or rework areas to identify that administrative waste and take corrective action at the root cause so that doesn't happen again. Other ways that you might experience, um, you could be over-processing. I call it analysis paralysis. You might be performing analysis in excess of steps that, that are really required. Um, so that's over-processing. Uh, you may have stagnation where um, employees may be idle waiting for information and their, their time is wasted. The big thing that what we find is untapped human potential. We have employees spending so much time performing transactions that could be automated or reworking the defects that we could um, nip in the bud at the beginning of the process. They're spending so much time on those type transactions that they're not spending on time um, tapping into their creativity and their knowledge and more of those value add activities. So we look at uh, processes based on um, this administrative wheel and the waste wheel. So from here, what we do is an operational assessment. So we have a couple of tools. We have our operational waste wheel. So we look at those core operational processes. You can do this internally if you have the capacity and the know-how uh, and you can conduct an operational assessment to identify where your major points of pain are. It's your opportunity to look both inward and outward from a customer uh, facing um, process basis. So look at those core operational processes, identify gaps in internal control. And this one's really important. Employees generally want to do a great job but their technology or their processes uh, may prevent them or they may not have features configured within their technologies that will automate their work. So they create what we call workarounds to get their job done. Um, so those workarounds could be in the form of spreadsheets. So I know in the staffing industry, you may have a lot of your data or your information might be in Excel spreadsheets or Word documents. We call those workarounds because that data and information should be in your source system and you should be able to create reports uh, and do the necessary functions without having these, these workarounds. So this is your opportunity to really look at your operations and at your processes and disrupt that status quo and redesign um, with the idea of capitalizing um, on the technology and building your processes to capitalize on that technology. So what we do is we use some process mapping tools. Uh, one of the tools you see here is a flow chart. So we may have workflow tools. Um, we also uh, business policies and procedures if you have those documented. Most of the time when we assist companies, they don't necessarily have them documented or they may be stale and processes um, have changed. Um, but when you're undertaking a digital transformation, updating your current state of processes, process mapping out that workflow 
and then understanding the features and of your new technology will help you um, configure the tools necessary within the technology system to automate your processes. So these are some of the tools. We use a variety of other tools as well, um, a responsible, accountable, consulted and informed charts, the RACI chart on who does what, um, workflow tools like this, um, policy and procedure documentation, other tools that we use is called a SIPOC, which is um, a workflow documentation. The S stands for supplier. Um, the I is for inputs. The P is process. The O is the outcome. And the C is the customer of the process. That helps us map the end-to-end -end processes of each sub area. And we use that data in the design and often the software selection process, which is what we're going to talk about next. So the next topic is, is your technology ready? So one of the first things um, you should ask yourself is have we fully leveraged our source systems? Um, I read a statistic not too long ago that said that most companies only use probably around 30% of the um, features within their existing systems. Their existing systems could be uh, a great system that's been implemented, but it's not being used to its fullest. Um, so what we want to do is evaluate first what you have, see how well you're using it, and leverage what you already have. If it's an older system or if it hasn't been upgraded well, um, or it's out of, you know, out of production or what have you, um, then so selecting a brand new system is warranted. But if you have a fairly recent system and you're just maybe not using the features and the functionality, you can save some money by rationalizing the systems that you have. Another area where we see is that maybe information systems aren't properly integrated. And we see a lot of swivel chair activity of people data entering from one system to the other rather than the systems talking to one another. There are quick fixes in middleware that will support that. And also, you know, are customers driving the, the output? And what is that output? And, you know, is it cost effective? Is it creating value? Um, because we often spend what we find is we see in businesses catering to customers and it's not necessarily profitable for the organization to serve those customers requirements. So evaluating your business, evaluating your customer and evaluating the amount of work to deliver those customer requirements and optimizing those customer requirements could be warranted. So looking at those First three things first um, could save you a, a time and money, but on many occasions, a new ERP system is warranted. So often we see some common slips and trips and falls when it comes to technology um, and, and the implementation of technology. The number one for us is that the business doesn't lead or may not necessarily participate in the evaluation of new technology or the implementation of that new technology. They depend on IT to do it for them. Like I said earlier, the subject matter experts of your business are your employees. They know their processes. They know how they serve their internal and external customers. They should be heavily involved in evaluating the tools that are chosen for the business and heavily involved in designing the business processes. Technology and IT should be the foundation and the tool to help them run their business. Otherwise, you may get a tool that doesn't meet your business need. The other um, slip that we see is during an implementation, companies using what we call part-time resources you have people who are subject matter experts, but they have their day job, and then they have this project. And every time the day job is going to take priority serving the customers, 
over getting this technology implemented. We've often seen taking four to five years for middle-sized businesses to actually get their ERP system and their technology up and running because of this choice. The most effective way to implement a new ERP or any type of technology is to dedicate resources with the subject matter expertise full time so that you can capitalize on the technology as quickly as possible. You're leaving dollars on the table and waste on the table if you don't implement on a timely basis. Um, this misnomer, the next misnomer is our business is so unique that we need to customize most of the software to suit us. If you're more than 20% customization, that is not the software for you. There is just a variety or so many softwares out there that are customized to meet the business needs that are configurable in workflows that you may not necessarily be that unique where it has to be customized to you. Um, so don't assume that you're so unique. I would assume first that I need to look at my processes. Why is this so unique? And are we doing, uh, are, do we have a lot of waste within our processes that could be leaned out so that we could use a commercially available technology more optimally. And then we have less customization and capitalize more on the configuration within the new system. Um, another uh, falsehood is don't assume right out of the gate that your new implemented technology is going to run as smoothly as the providers demonstrated. Um, Usually what they show you within the demonstration are canned programs, but we want to make sure that your software is working with your business. So it makes take a little time um, before it's as smooth as you would like it. Um, and implementing everything on day one, we've done some big bang implementations before. They are very difficult, but having a strategic rollout and a staggered rollout um, is best for an organization. It's not as painful. So as you're evaluating your processes and as you're um, you know, looking at your operations and you're leaning out, this is a great opportunity for you to gather the requirements, the business requirements that your organization will need out of a tool of technology. So as you're looking at sales, and you may want to look at how do we track customers? What kind of data do we need? How do we need that data to feed into the quoting system? How do we take that quote and turn it into an order? How do we take that order and how do we fulfill that order and how we turn that order into cash? So you might want to be thinking along the way, all the, the detailed requirements that you need. This on the screen is what we call the O requirements traceability matrix. We record each of the requirements. Uh, we categorize them and give them a numerical scoring of how important it is to have this feature within the tool. And we provide this requirements traceability matrix to the possible vendors that are out there who could fill my, fulfill my technology needs. This helps them understand your business better, what you're going to need out of the biz, out of the software, and they can respond to your needs to say, yes, we can do this. No, we can't do this. Yes, this is configurable. No, this is a customization. Yes or no, it's included in the price of the technology. So if you have a very detailed requirements traceability matrix, this will help you into your, your design. Um, it also helps, um, select the right stock for a vendor, because uh, we want to give a quantitative score to that technology um, so that we can match the technology to the best of your business needs. Now, there's some qualitative pieces too. You want to do demonstrations of the product. You want to do a day in the life of your company with inside that product. And you want your vendors to be able to articulate and demonstrate um, that their, their tool will work best for your business. But you won't know that unless you're gathering detailed requirements, developing a requirements traceability matrix and providing that to vendors. 
and then um, sending out those requirements. We use a request for, for proposal. We um, prepare functional and technical requirements and you need to do that too. So if you do this internally, sending out a request for a proposal with your requirements traceability matrix um, attached to it, answering a variety of questions about their business, about the functionality, about the software that they're recommending and scoring that software will help you select the one that's best meets your needs. Do a little research about on the ERP systems or the technology that you might be searching for. What are some of them are out there? Um, I will always refer to a Gartner um, research. Gartner does a lot of research on a lot of different technologies and they evaluate those technologies and provide reports. So we start there first and we develop out a long list of Gartner research technology uh, and see if it will fit the needs of the organization. So understanding what's out there is critical. Understanding what your business needs is critical. Delivering that to prospective vendors in the form of a request for proposal and having them respond and demonstrate their software to you will give you a little bit more comfort that this is the software for you. So when we talk about, is your technology ready? We first wanna say, are we, utilizing our existing technology well? Is it up to date? Um, if we're not using it well, how can we use it better? Can we get away with not doing a, tech, a new technology? First, evaluate rationalizing what you have. Uh, but if that's you know, not an option, then making sure you put a science behind the technology selection is, is very critical. So the next area, so we've talked about the vision and the strategy. We've talked about process optimization, how critical it is to understand where you want to go in the future with your processes. Developing out that, those requirements, traceability matrix, making sure that we're really looking at our technology um, that we have today and what we might need for the future. And the next piece is about your people. It's about change management. So we can't just pop a tool in place and say, ta-da, um, here we go, everybody. Here's your new tool. The best way for it, the implementation of a technology is to start in the very beginning of the, your project and, and your journey with a change management infrastructure in mind. We want to be able to successfully implement your new technology, and we want the users of that technology to adapt and adopt it as quickly as possible. If you start with change management in mind and you involve your organization and you bring them along the change uh, incrementally along the way, you will have a more successful implementation. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So, for, for a lot of companies that we've worked with, like I said earlier, um, there are companies that have had their technology for a very long time and they've had their processes for a very long time. And when we ask, why do you do your process this way? Many times, the majority of the time, what we hear is, well, this is the way we've always done it, or this is the way I was taught but they don't necessarily understand why we do it this way. And so they're not thinking with a continuous improvement culture in mind. Now, what a continuous improvement culture will, will establish is you, you gather employees' ideas, the subject matter experts of the process or within your organization. And you know what? That culture of continuous improvement sets a foundation in your employees for adapting to change, but it creates passion and ownership too. If they're involved in the design and the creation along the way, they act like entrepreneurs. Um, you can tap into that institutional knowledge of your team if you involve them in some of the decisions. Um, you wanna set into play behavioral routines where employees are thinking about how can I do this better all the time rather than the old way of thinking of this is the way I've always done it. 
So putting a change management infrastructure in place, developing out a continuous improvement culture will help along the way, developing ownership, excitement around the new technology, passion, ideas for change, and better user adoption of the tool. Technology is expensive. And what we want to make sure is that you're not one of those $132 million in waste for every billion dollars spent. We want to make sure that you're successful. And these are the steps to do that. Is, and this is most critical, is making sure that the employees are brought along the way, that they're thinking within a continuous improvement culture and mindset, and that we put behavioral routines in play where employees bring solutions um, to the game. You may see some resistance to change. A lot of times, what the reason for resistance is we're not communicating enough as to the why for the technology change. We're not making the employees aware of why management has decided um, to uh, make a technology change. You may, along the way, when employees realize the efficiencies you get from technology, there could be a fear of job loss or job change. And we need to be thinking about that in the future is there could be a, an efficiency, there could be an elimination of FTEs, but there also could be other value added activities that these employees could be concentrating on to drive business into the organization. So what we really wanna do is free people up from administration so you can focus more on driving sales, more on providing value added key performance measures, reporting and metrics, rather than or focusing on finding new candidates to go on consulting engagements. That's where we wanna do is to eliminate that administrative waste and eliminate that fear. And communication strategies and awareness in place early on um, will kind of eliminate that resistance to change. They'll be excited to be a part of that change. Another area where we see resistance to change is maybe there is not, not management support or reinforcement or involvement during the project. It's really critical to have executive sponsorship and leadership that it's, we're constantly uh, communicating, they're involved, and we're reinforcing the need and the focus of the vision on where we're going to go. And employees also need to understand the consequences of not changing. I read a quote by a general, um, a, a US um, a general that said, um, if you don't like change, you're not, going, you're not going to like irrelevance anymore. So if you're not adaptive to change, you're going to be irrelevant. So we don't want to be irrelevant. We want to adapt to change and be competitive in the marketplace. And we talked a little bit about this, but we call it project fatigue. And that's when we try to uh, full-time employees to the part-time project of implementing software. We burn them out. Or you have too many projects going on at once. That tendency uh, for employees to resist that change and is caused by thought project fatigue. So we have to plan out technology change and the disruption as much as possible. So how do we do a continuous improvement culture? How do we put one into play? And this is our model of, of how we put the optimal performance management system into play. Uh, and it has five components. We first really start with the vision and your strategy. So understanding the corporate vision and the corporate strategy and communicating that throughout the organization is critical giving the employees their why. Because like I said, if you provide your people with a good why, they'll do any kind of what you want them to. So employees generally wanna know what good looks like. So we start with our vision and our strategy and how do we measure the success of our performance? Well, we develop key performance indicators and key results indicators. And we start at the highest level of the business 
and we drive it down to the individual employee. Then we understanding what measures are important, we empower our employee to own their work and to own their KPIs and measures. And here's what I'm talking about. In order to empower an employee, we hand over decision-making and we empower them by letting, here's the under how your job needs to be performed. Here's how you measure what success looks like. Now go and do, and we empower them through decision-making. Sometimes that means letting them try new things, um, learning from failures as well as successes. I got to tell you that um, I vividly remember fail my failures, uh, great learnings, a lot more than I, you know, remember the successes. So the first thing I had a great learning from a pain and a failure. Um, that molded me into, you know, the leader that I am today. And I'm very thankful for those. They were painful at the time, but learning from successes and failures as well. 70% of the people in general um, learn by doing hands-on, on-the-job experience. So let them try new things. Um, let, them, let them learn, you know, within reason, have some failures and have some successes. So that's empowering your employees, handing over decision-making, empowering them through that decision-making and letting them learn new things. So um, that would be how you empower. The other thing we do, you know, what gets measured gets done. I know you've all heard that saying, but what gets published really gets done. So here are some examples of what we call visual factories. It could be dashboards, it could be charts within, uh, you know, on the wall of the conference room. I've seen that in manufacturing. I've seen uh, overhead projectors and screens and call centers. I've seen screens and I've seen all the KPIs up and running. Sometimes we have people's names, little healthy competition doesn't hurt. Uh, but what measured gets, what gets measured gets done. But when you publish it and employees know that management is serious and that they're looking at these metrics, that's when you'll see performance increase. By putting an optimal performance management system in place like this, we've seen a 20 to 30% productivity lift in all aspects of the business, including finance and administration. So consider thinking about publishing what your KPIs might look like as well. Then we have communication. That's your next area. So um, these are what I call behavioral routines. It's bringing the team together to communicate on a regular basis, to share ideas, to problem solve, and to create solutions. So in manufacturing, every day before a shift, a manager, most managers will have team meetings and they'll talk about KPIs from the prior day shift, what's on the work front for uh, the current shift, any problems that they're, ha they're having. You can do this in a staffing organization too. We call it a stand-up meeting because it's what needs to be quick. But this will help generate some excitement about whatever transformation you're doing. Um, so you're, you'll be talking about your technology, you'll be talking about um, you know, uh, the, the implementation, any troubles that you're having, you'll be talking about your daily performance, uh, issues you might be having with a customer, um, maybe you don't have the right candidates. So having a daily stand-up meeting and, or a communication best practice and solve problem solving together, um, is one of the components of this uh, optimal performance management system. Um, communicating uh, across the impacted audience, across the organization. Sometimes you may have cross-functional teams together, sales, recruiting, finance and accounting. You'll have all of those impacted um, representatives in this behavioral um, routine. Um, and this is your, your opportunity to create and sustain awareness. 
if it's operational or if it's a technology transformation. Um, this is a time where you can you know, share highlights of your progress, what's ahead. And you know, sometimes you might want to recognize employees and this is a great place and time to reward and recognize those who are participating um, in the transformation. And if you have any type of internal communication platforms, an intranet site, uh, a company board or what have you, these are some of the tools that you can use in your behavioral routine. And last but not least, celebrate. Um, the, one of the number one reasons why employees leave employers is lack of recognition. And, you know, it's not necessarily monetary that is needed. It's just the recognition of, hey, you've done a great job or sending an email to the employee or, you know, some sort of um, recognition, not necessarily a, a, a a uh, certificate, but the mere acknowledgement from management to an employee or a team or recognition to the rest of the organization really supports the goal of um, recognizing your employee for the, the behaviors and the, the focus on the vision. So that's how we put a culture and a change management culture in place is by instilling that organization of measurements that matter, empowering our employees, publishing our results for the world to see, putting in behavioral routines where we solve problems together and act as a team, and then celebrating our successes and our wins. So um, hopefully this presentation, you as you're getting ready for your new technology implementation and selection, that you understand that disruption with a purpose is a good thing. Uh, we're gonna disrupt our status quo the way we've always done it. And we're going to be innovative and create new processes and we're going to be prepared and we're gonna capitalize on our technology so that we're automating and we're pulling out those administrative tasks so that our team can focus on value added activities. And we'll start with that change early on in our efforts to make sure that our under employees understand why we're going through the change, what the benefits of that change are, how it's going to help us reach our vision, and empowering them to help us get there. So those are my closing comments. So does um, anybody have any questions? I don't see anything. This is Brittany. Um, I just wanted to thank Cindy so much. Um, we are actually out of time. Um, we provided so much good content here and I really appreciate her coming on and doing this. Um, for those who have submitted questions, we will have Corey and Cindy reach out to answer your questions individually. Um, and if you still have questions that you would like to submit, Cindy and Corey's information is here on the screen. So we'll give you just a second to um, take that down. And we just appreciate everyone who um, came to this workshop today, and we hope you enjoyed all of the content. We just thank everybody for their time. I know this is a long workshop, but there's really uh, some wonderful and valuable tips for digital transformation and, and harnessing that disruption. So thank you for your time.